Hello. Um, now then, a little while ago, I was um, looking around for a new scroll saw. I was in the market for one, so I thought I'll do a bit of investigating, see what's um, out there, what's available, um, and what people's views are of them. Um, I went to all the big makes that you normally go to, Bosch, Makita, DeWalt, the yeah, usual things. Um, in the end, I found out that um, the preferred one was a company called Excalibur. Um, they do a range of three, uh, quite a bit more expensive than um, the likes of DeWalt and Makita and such, um, but totally different to them. Now they did a, or oh, they still do a, a 16, a 21 and a 30 inch throat version. Um, the distributors in the UK for this company is none other than Axminster Power Tool Company. So uh, when I was ready I went to them and yes they had them. Unfortunately they was out of stock and they was not getting them back in. They were now actually discontinued. So I rang them up and found out what was going on. It turned out that the reason they were discontinued is that because they were selling so many, Axminster were selling so many, um, they decided they were going to be rebranded for Axminster, some deal or something that they had. Um, and next time they get them in, they will not be Excalibur, they will be Axminster, but still the EX 16, 21 and 30. So I had a word with the technical department about this and basically the only thing that was going to be changed is the paint job and the nib, nothing else. Apart from the price, it came down quite considerably. Um, a good 15-20% oh, I would say from the original, and it was about £700 originally, and they've come down to about five and a half now, so it's quite a saving. Um, so how they've wangled that without making any um, quality cuts is it, good. Um, but nevertheless, the tool were cheaper and available just under a different name. So, I ordered one and it's here. So now presenting, I think probably for the first time, the Axminster Trade EX21 scroll saw. Let's unpack it and see what we get. Okay, and we have one instruction manual. Um, caution. Do not lift by the upper arm. Um, no, because it's got a quick change system on it. Um, the quick change system basically uh, means that the arm lifts up so you can change the blade quickly. Quite unique. Um, I'm not a great one for lifting machinery. Anyway, it's far better to slide. And we don't need the box. The one's not going to the side of it. So I said unpack and set up, I think this machine is actually coming already set up. Lots of lovely polystyrene. Rich. Replacement tensioner um, and some little not nibble things of something or other. Right, okay, so what we've got main on off four switch there and an on off switch here. Yeah, okay, speed. So it's variable, that's good. Um, that's your tensioner. And here, that's oh, spare fuse. English plug, that's nice of them. Um, okay, let's get it out so I can let you have a quick look around. There it is then, out of the box, um, and in its full lovely colours. Um, having a, a good look around it. Now, first thing you'll notice between this and uh, the Excalibur, of course, is the big nameplate that we had there. Um, the colours used to be a white, now we've got this nice grey uh, colour. 
Um, but the tool itself. These little slots, a lot of detail. You're going to like these details. These little slots here. When you buy your blades, they come in little test tubes. They're made with little slots inside them so that they'll sit in and you can carry. You've got six on each side. Carry 12 test tubes or blades, so all different sizes. So you've got all your blades there to hand, conveniently stored. We've got the lock for the wood hold down, um, which in angles we can turn this one, pivot it there. It's got an Allen key in there to lock it off, should we want to. And the dust blower. Uh, you'll notice with this, it's a, a very nicely made piece of pipe work. Every joint on it is all knuckle jointed so it can be positioned in any such position you want to really get it aimed like you had. The last one I had it was just a plastic pipe and literally you have to force it to get it to stay still. It's perfect. Um, okay now main features of this machine this type of machine is this piece here. Now you'll see Underneath the mechanism for tilting, not the table, but the machine itself. Loosen off, and as you turn it with the teeth ratchet there, it will tilt the machine completely, leaving you still working on a flat surface, which obviously is the most comfortable. And as that tilts, you can then level it back up. So it still holds the wood down good and firm. And adjust the blower as you want. Now that is one of the, the good points. You have underneath that a little press locator. Press that, take it round and listen. Yeah, try again. Hear that? Probably not, but it drops in to the exact position. And then we've got there, as you see, the calibrations all round as protractor settings underneath it there and um, so you've got your usual settings but a preset to lock up making it just that little bit easier I don't want 90 there we have it 90 keep your finger on it press it and locked off now I know that's 90 I'll check it later with the blade but when I know it's set then I know that once it's on there it is definitely at 90 now <clears throat> putting the blade in Underneath here, we've got a simple butterfly nut. And the same at the top there, a little butterfly nut. We put the blade in, lock it through the hole, into there, lock it. And that's it. <coughs> Making sure the tensioner is off. That is your tensioner, just for locking and unlocking the blade. It's not your main tensioner, it's just for ch blade changing. For quick release. Um, right. <coughs> Once you get your blade in, you see, there it is all working in harmony with each other lock it off that's it you're ready to go then underneath behind that we've got the dust extractor now when I first looked at this machine I'm seeing that big thing there and in the top here there's no holes how can that work really to look closely and underneath there's a very fine slot facing this way and it's going to be sucking with power. Underneath the blade in that area, you've got a circle of holes. Well, this is going to blow away a lot, but as it's going up and down, it's dropping them. And as they're going drop down, they're so fine, this dust extractor and takes them away. How efficient, I don't know, I'll find out. But it's a clever idea. Yeah. Dust extractor on such a machine, got to be difficult to work on, so. They've come up with something, so they have got to give me a hat. Okay, let's turn the machine around. I put this board up so you can see sunlight in the way, or any kind of light up here is not very good. Okay, on this side again, you can see that brush is trapped a bit better now, and again, you've got another six of them. Now, one point of interest on this machine, being the Axminster, EX21 and not the Excalibur EX21 there is a difference 
I didn't notice it straight away when I took it out of the box, although I did, if you remember, if you've seen me face when I'm playing around with the switches, but yes, that has been added. That is an upgrade. Technical department never told me that. Um, that is an upgrade, and when I've gone back through um, thinking about researching this stuff, I looked at Ex um, Axminster's other model. Um, the AW18, I believe it is, Axmas, I forget to be exact, but it's got a big switching unit here. And it quite clearly states that that switching unit is there to bring into line their machine with regulations for schools and colleges. So that'll be what that's there for. Giving us that extra safety. If they've got to have it in schools and colleges, then obviously health and safety are deemed that is not enough and you need the zero voltage switch so you can't turn it on and off from a distance that's the main purpose of it so really i think that is about as much as we need to know about the machine apart from getting to work with it now i'm going to i bought it upstairs because this is the ideal place for me and um, it's a, a low noise low dirt machine and it's a sort of thing where you want to be sitting down comfortable when working it um, not like a bandsaw where you just go and do your bit of work on your saw table and then move on. Doing this tends to be a, a bit of a prolonged job. So I will be setting up making, building a uh, bench chair system which puts this on solid at the correct angle and gives me some dampening and everything secure and a good seating position so that I am comfortable and probably fit a light of some sort to it. Swan neck maybe, LED, I don't know. Mm, it'll come. Um, uh, that's, but this is basically where it's gonna be, upstairs to do its work, but not on here, this is too high. But uh, as for Axminster and the EX21, it was a brilliant machine before they got it. Now they've just made it that little bit better. Okay, right, well, that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you again later. Bye for now. Hi, just a quick update. Um, what we're saying about the dust extractor, turns out there's actually a hard, clear plastic membrane underneath these holes, sealed round all the way, and going into the dust extractor. And um, so the dust goes onto the plastic clear film and gets sucked away, not dropping on the floor. Yeah, gets more and more interesting. Okay, bye again. See you later. Bye for now.